In this section, we'll be looking at exponential growth and decay, and also modeling data. And out of that section, we'll be modeling ex exponential growth and decay, use logistic growth models, and express an exponential model in base E. Okay, we'll first talk about exponential growth and decay. And this is what the mathematical model looks like for an exponential growth or exponential decay. And that's given by this function, f of x is equal to a sub 0 times e to the k times t. Or we can say a is equal to a sub 0 times e to the kt. Now, if k is a positive number that's greater than 0, that means the function models the amount or the size of growing entity. Or if k is less than 0, then the function models the amount or size of decaying entity. That means that the size of that particular particle or some type of a colony of a certain population is uh, decreasing. Okay. And sometimes we need to use given data to determine what K is, which is called the rate of growth or decay. And after we compute the value of k, we can use the formula a is equal to a sub 0 e to the k times t. And let me uh, mention what a sub 0 is. That's the initial amount at a certain time. And of course, k is the exponent, well, is that uh, rate of growth or decay. k could be positive or negative. And t is the time. Here, let's look at a few problems like this. The exponential models describe the population of the indicated country, which is A in millions, T after T years after 2006. Use these models to solve the following problems here, and we'll look at what those problems are. Here we got four different exponential models, one for India where a is equal to 1095.4 times e to the 0 0.014t. Iraq, where a is 26.8 times e to the 0 0.027t. Japan, is a is equal to 127.5 e to the 0 0.001t. And Russia, is a is equal to 142.9 times e to the negative 0 0.004t. So these are examples of uh, models of a certain population. And we're going to use those to answer these questions. What is the population of Japan in 2006? Okay. So we want to find out the population of Japan in 2006. Now, the model for Japan, as I mentioned, showed you earlier, was A is equal to 107.5 times e to the 0 0.001 times t. Okay, so we want to find out what t is. And this is t years after 2006. So, and we're finding out the population of Japan in 2006. So if we subtract 2006 from itself, that means t is equal to zero. So we just replace the t with zero in this particular formula for Japan or the exponential model. So you have a is equal to 127.5 times e to the 0 0.001 times zero. Well, zero times anything is zero, so you're going to have 127.5 e to the zero. And of course, e to the power of zero is one, so one times 127.5 will be 127.5, and this will be 127.5 million. Okay, so the population in Japan in the year 2006 was 127.5 million. Okay, so that's how you evaluate the population using that exponential growth model. Okay. 
All right, the next one is what is the population of Iraq in 2006? Okay, so for Iraq, its exponential model was A is equal to 26.8 times E to the 0 0.027 times T. Well, 2006, and this represents T years after 2006, so obviously T is going to be zero. So here we'll have 26.8, well A is equal to 26.8 times E to the 0 0.027 times zero. Well, 0 0.027 times zero is zero, so this will be A is equal to 26.8 E to the zero, and of course E to the zero is one, so A will have to be equal to 26.8. That's from 26.8 times one. So the population in Iraq in the year 2006 will be 26.8 million. Okay. All right, now the next question is, when will India's population be 1,238 million? Okay, so now let's look at the uh, exponential growth formula for India. Now for India, it was A is equal to 1095.4 times E to the 0 0.014 times T. Okay? That was the formula that was given to us. That was the exponential model for India. And we want to find out when will that population be 1,238 million. Okay, so in this case here, we got 1,238. That's equal to 1,095.4 times e to the 0.014 times t. And then get e to the 0.014t by itself by dividing both sides by 1,095.4. So here, if we do 1238 divided by 1,095.4, you'll get this large number, 1.13018. And that's equal to e to the 0 0.014 times t. And then, of course, e and ln are inverses of each other. We take the ln on both sides of this equation. So we got ln of 1.3018 equals to ln of e to the 0 0.014t. Now, ln of e to whatever this exponent is, is that exponent. So, ln, ln of e to the 0 0.014t would be 0 0.014t. That's equal to ln of 1.3018. And then to solve for t, we divide both sides by 0 0.014. And then... What we'll do here is ln of 1.3018 divided by 0.014. That will give you, we'll say, 18.8. So it'll be 18.8 years, approximately. So it's going to take 18.8 years, approximately, for the population of India to reach 120 through... 1,238 1, million. Okay. Okay. So this is where we could uh, also use this to find out the time. Okay. Next is exponential decay. 
Exponential decay is used in determining the age of fossils and artifacts. The half-life of a substance is the time required for half of a given sample to disintegrate. Okay, so when we deal with exponential decay, that usually means that a certain fossil or a colony of bacteria or some artifact will be decaying or decreasing over time. An example of that would be this. An artifact originally had 16, gra 16 grams of carbon-14 present. The decaying model, A is equal to 16e to the negative point zero 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 one two one t describes the amount of carbon-14 present after t years. Now we want to use this model to solve the next two exercises that I'm going to show you. In this case here, how many grams of carbon-14 will be present in 5,715 years? Okay, so in this case, T is 5,715. And I'll go ahead and write down my model that we have here. Okay, so this is the the model and T is 5,715 years. We just simply replace the T with 5,715. So we got A is equal to 16 E to the negative 0 0.000121 times 5,715. And then we can type this into the calculator. We type in 16. Now for the E, we always press second and LN for E. And then negative 0 0.0012 0, 0, 0, 0, times 5715 and close the parentheses. And then press enter. And this will give you we're going to say to two decimal places, 8.01. Okay. So in this case here, to find out how many grams of carbon-14 will be present, that's 8.01 grams of carbon-14 is present. Okay. And then next, the other example, if I can get to it, is this. How many grams of carbon-14 will be present in 11,430 years? Okay, so this time, T is 11,430, and that's our formula. A is equal to 16E to the negative 0 0.000121 times, now T is 11,430. So A is equal to 16 and then second LN for the E, then negative zero, well negative point zero 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 one two one times 11,430 close parentheses, that would be 4.01 grams, approximately. So there will be 4.01 grams of carbon-14 present after 11,000, in 11,430 years. Okay. So that's how we use these type of exponential decay formulas to solve problems. All right, next we'll look at is a logistics, logistics, logistics growth model, hard to pronounce. The mathematical model for limited logistic growth model is given by this particular formula. F of t is equal to c divided by 1 plus a e to the negative b times t. Or we can say a is equal to c divided by 1 plus a e to the negative b times t. 
A, B, and C are constants, by the way. C is greater than zero, and B is greater than zero. And as time increases, that means as T gets bigger and bigger and bigger, meaning T approaches infinity, then the expression AE to the negative BT, that will approach zero, which means that A gets closer and closer to C. That means that the value of A can never exceed whatever C is, and C represents the limiting size that A can attain. Okay, that's very important. So that means the limiting size would be the number that's in the numerator, because that's the highest it can get. All right, let's look at this particular problem here. In a learning theory project, psychologists discovered that f of t is equal to 0 0.8 divided by 1 plus e to the negative 0.2t is a model for describing the proportion of correct, correct responses f of t after t learning trials. So here this is a three-part question. We want to find the proportion of correct responses prior to the learning trials taking place. And then you're going to find the proportion of correct responses after, t le after 10 learning trials. And part C, what is the limiting size of f of t? That, that's the proportion of correct responses as continued learning trials take place. Okay, so let's write down the, the logistics growth formula that we have here, or the model. So here we have this model right here that we're using. And there are three parts. We're going to answer part A, the proportion of correct responses prior to learning trials taking place. Which means that T represents the number of learning trials is zero. Okay, so we'll be evaluating F of zero in this case. That's going to be 0 0.8 divided by 1 plus e to the negative point 0 0.2 times 0. Which is going to be quite easy because in the denominator, e to the negative point 2 times 0, well, negative point 0.2 times 0 is 0. So I have 1 plus e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so you'll have 0 0.8 divided by 1 plus 1 which is going to be 2, so it'll be 0 0.8 divided by 2, which is 0.4. So the proportion of correct responses prior to any learning trials taking place would be 0.4. Okay. Now part B. We want to find the proportion of correct responses after 10 learning trials. So this time T is going to be equal to 10. Okay, so we'll evaluate f of 10. That'll be 0 0.8 divided by 1 plus e to the negative 0 0.2 times 10. Now let's simplify this a bit. We got 0 0.8 in the numerator. The denominator will be 1 plus e. Negative 0 0.2 times 10 will be negative 2. So I have in the denominator 1 plus e to the negative 2. This can be done in the calculator. So in this case here, clear that out. The numerator will be 0 0.8 divided by, and I'm going to use parentheses in, for the denominator. So here I'm going to have 1 plus, now for the e, second, ln, and then negative 2 and then close the parentheses again, and then hit enter. So in this case, this will be, we're going to say 0.70. So the proportion of correct responses after 10 learning trials will be 0.70. Okay. And then finally, part C is the limiting size of f of t, which is a proportion of correct responses as continued learning trials take, and take place. Well, that's easy. We just look at our numerator because that numerator is the maximum 
amount in this case as the t approaches infinity the number of learning trials continues so the answer there is just simply 0.8 All right, so that's how we use a logistics growth model to do this type, to do those type of problems here. Another one is this: the list logis, the logistic growth function f of p of x is equal to 90 divided by 1 plus 271e to the negative 0.122x models the percentage or p of x of Americans who are X years old with some coronary heart disease. Now here you want to solve the next two problems using this particular function. And in this case here, now here you're going to see what percentage of 20 year olds have some coronary heart disease. In this case X is equal to 20. And then we do P of 20 which is going to be 90 divided by 1 minus 271e to the negative 0.122 times 20. Okay, and I will show you how that's done in the calculator here. Okay, we type in 90 divided by, and then left parentheses, 1 plus 271, and then for e, second ln, and then negative. 0.122 times 20. Then close the parentheses and then you're going to need to close it again. And then hit enter. Okay, so in this case here, we're saying, we're going to say 3.7, rounded to one decimal place. So in this case here, about 3.7% of 20 year olds have some coronary heart disease. Okay. And then this next problem, what percent of what percentage of 80 year olds have this have some coronary heart disease? And this should be P of 80, not P of 20. That's P of 80, which is equal to 90 divided by 1, 1 plus 271 e to the negative 0 0.122 times 80. And again, we can use the calculator. And in this case, you're going to have 90 divided by, and then left parentheses, 1 plus 271, and then second ln for the e, then negative 0.122 times 80. And you'll get 88.6% rounded to one decimal place. So in this case here, 88.6% have some coronary heart disease. 88.6% of the 80-year-old people would have some coronary heart disease based on that model. Okay, the last thing I'll talk about is expressing y is equal to a to the a b to the x in base e. And when we express that exp exponential model in base e, y is equal to a to the a b to the x that's equivalent to y equals a times e to the natural logarithm of b times x because we're going by the rule if you have this e to the ln of some number equals some number so the fact is that we can say e to the ln of b is b here we're just working backwards on that. Okay? That's how we express this in base E. And we're going to look at an, at an example of just that. Let's say we want to rewrite y is equal to 4 times 7.8 raised to the 8th power in terms of base E. And we're going to express the answer in terms of a natural logarithm and then round to three decimal places. Okay, so here this is our equation here. So here we're going to have y is equal to, we bring down the 4, 
and then we introduce e to the ln of this number right here, 7.8. times x. So we have y is equal to e to the ln 7.8 times x. Now we need to calculate the natural logarithm of 7.8. So here we just press ln and then 7.8. And this is going to be rounded to three decimal places. Which is of course 2.054. So ln of 7.8 will be 2.054. So here we're going to have y is equal to 4e to the 0, 2.054 times x. Now I'll go ahead and rewrite it a little bit better. I'll cross this out. This one here is this. Okay, so that's pretty much how you'll write that particular equation in the form of with base E. And that will conclude this particular section on uh, modeling data and exponential growth and decay.